this is like an impossible question to answer, but like how far along that journey do you think we are? I mean, we've made tons of strides over the past couple of years looking at yeah. even Hedera compared to a few years ago. Um, but how early in the baseball game are we? <laughs> <laughs> That's a, that's, a, that's a terrible question. I I think it depends, uh, but I would also say that um, a couple of years ago, with uh, you know the disease that shall not be named, um, there were there was a uh, Hedera product. Um, I can't remember what it was called, uh, but they were basically tracking the temperatures of vaccines in real time, and so that's like an invisible layer thing that everyone is benefiting from. Um, so I think to a degree, these solutions already exist. Um, but, you know, it is, it is an abstract philosophical um, idea, though. Carbon credits and ESG continue to be one of the most overlooked areas in crypto. The build out of these AI powered data centers is rapidly accelerating the introduction of carbon into the environment. You are now tuned in to Shook Focus, and it is time. And it is time. Previously on Shook Focus. Amazon and these other companies have agreed to buy carbon offset credits that will support the conservation of its namesake rainforest in a Brazilian state of Pará in a deal valued at around $180 million. The proceeds are to be allocated to indigenous and local communities. It's time to shake the focus up. Sick of being sick and tired. Tell me if you had enough. Yeah. It's Shooks in the building now. We ain't missing nothing. We gon' catch you if they got a roll. You know, I think when a lot of people that might not be in crypto hear the term uh, digital identity, um, mm. they just automatically default to, oh, this is, uh, you know, Book of Revelations. <laughs> 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 which which I, you know, I, don't, I don't know if they're necessarily totally wrong in certain regards hopefully this stuff's done right from the individual identity standpoint but i think that it's misconstrued or not misconstrued but i think it's like an obtuse statement to say that it's just about people like tokenized assets have tied just as much into digital identity um, mm. as individuals do and i think you're kind of getting into that a little bit here with dovu os and tokenized real world assets and and the identity that assets have as they become tokenized like because if they don't have an identity then it makes what's kind of the point of bringing them on chain what is good y'all what is good thanks for tuning in and welcome back to another episode and i just got to say that solomon from generation infinity continues to provide some of the best dovu interviews out there don't get me wrong we've seen some nice twitter spaces and i'm hoping to still catch one myself but it was literal heat the full thing was about an hour long so Obviously, we're not sniping that whole interview, but if you want to check it out, you can head on over to X. I watched this whole thing probably twice, and I retweeted it as well, but you know stuff gets buried on Twitter. So, also a huge shout out to all the new subscribers. Please keep smashing and punching all the buttons. A lot of y'all been asking me for more on Dovu, and make no mistake, Dovu, as well as another project that we keep bumping into in this space, in my opinion, are great opportunities for people new to crypto because while it might be a bit of a learning curve to get to them, not many are talking about what's going on in this sector, which means one word, early. And as my pops used to say, sleep late, lose weight. So let's get it. This one is going to be a little bit different than usual because instead of just talking about the token, we're going to look at the fight that I see brewing behind the scenes because this has the potential to really shape which projects come out as winners, even though for the most part, the carbon sector and crypto looks like a pretty safe bet all around. And for that, we're revisiting this COP29 event because some pretty important details came out that I think got overlooked. And this here was written by Christina, the chief operating officer at Dovu and published on January 28th, 2025. COP29 was held in November of 2024 in Baku, Azerbaijan. COP is the United Nations Conference of the Parties where they discuss the climate crisis and this has apparently been going on since the 1990s. She notes that 2024 is the hottest year on record for the planet. So for those of us wondering what the heck is going on with these seasons these last couple years, 
it's clear that it's because we doing things with the layers of the earth and producing all this increased waste and other things that we're going to see as we continue here and it's throwing everything out of whack so deloitte was at this event when we start to see these super billion dollar companies i think we're looking in the right places and actually there was two really big things that went down at this event the actual agreement of carbon credit sales between two countries and an update to article 6. now article 6 is part of the paris agreement which the u.s recently pulled out of but that's coming for you at the end of this video so let's look into these details this article from the environmental defense fund is going to give us most of what we're looking for in this first part it talks about the adoption of article 6 being a historic milestone but with issues the big one being that of course it leaves room for the little people to get left out if some changes don't get made they would like to see engagement with the indigenous peoples be prioritized and not have them be afterthoughts and that's only right so let's look at these updates countries can now trade mitigation units aka carbon credits among themselves and it looks like this was decided under section 6.2 which states a structure to bilaterally transfer emission reductions countries can now have carbon credit trades from domestic systems or linked emissions markets officially recognized by the UN however the elephant is that the UN will not oversee the quality of environmental outcomes even though there was a call to transparency naming and shaming serving as the primary enforcement tool for quality talk about doing half the job wow uh, <laughs> let's keep going so they also call out the myths on integrity here and then we get into section 6.4 and this is where it gets interesting to me under 6.4 it allows for the transition of large volumes of old credits from the clean development mechanism into the paris agreement it goes on to say that cdm units have been discredited over time and urges countries not to use these credits towards commitments so these must be those old credits that i think Irvine, the founder of dovu was hinting at we do things a little different what we don't do is tokenize carbon from old carbon from existing registries um which which some of our web3 partners and and companies have done in the past um we try to get new carbon um onto the system because the world needs new projects not rehashing old projects and sticking them onto a web3 platform and trying to make them excited um there's no fun in that and there's no re there's i don't see where the where the value is in that, frankly, um, you know, so there isn't enough quality carbon credits out there in the world to to um, set the requirements of the vast majority of global corporations that have made a commitment to be net zero by a certain time. So we need to get new carbon on board as quickly as possible. So I did a little search on CDM to see if any of the crypto carbon projects popped up. And of course, I ran into Klima Dow, which we have mentioned before. Now, there looks to have been some changes here. Recently, Klima was making claims to having the largest repository of carbon credits in the space, but I'm not seeing that on the site anymore. But what I am seeing is CDM listed under their data sources. And it's not just listed there, but this is an article from S&P Global where Klima mentions that CDM credits could be an option for them specifically calling out the changes to article 6 in november of 2024 so it would definitely seem that some are looking to take advantage of that loophole now while we know dovu has access to the hedera governing council klima has access to big names too with circle mark cuban chain link and icr listed to name a few and Klima is packing more than just the CDM credits. I absolutely do see success with that project and plan to cover it more in the future because just like Dovu, when Klima runs, it runs in a hurry. But I wanted to point out some of the important pieces of conversation in this carbon credit project space. 
As we get ready to end this voiceover portion, I wanted to call out a few things Christina mentioned in closing. The first is this piece about the scale of challenges requiring an everything all at once approach, which translates to me as crypto and blockchain being a piece of this solution right from the start. Then the mention of COP30 being in Brazil, because we know that's where a lot of these rainforest conservation projects kicking off at with Microsoft, Amazon, and a bunch of other companies getting involved. Then also the note that Dovu or Christina is part of the DLT Earth ecosystem, which the HBAR Foundation is also a part of. Helps point to Dovu being a possible solution for some of those governing council members. Don't forget Tata is on the Hedera Governing Council. This is like a purpose-built solution or platform, op, you know, operating system um, that probably solves some of the pain points or some of the onboarding points that a lot of these players, like enterprise institutions, would want to kind of see. Um, is that? Did you guys take a note, kind of, from discussions with some of these players, and like, does that spark, you know, ideas for something like this, or was this always kind of the some of, like the plan? So. Um... From my point of view, um, and I don't speak about this much, I look at the Hedera positioned, um, you know, as, as a DOT. I look at the governing council. They're all enterprises. What do enterprises need? They need supply chain, asset verification. Um, they need to model data. They need to do all those things, right? And so this is basically designed as much as for our needs as potential, you know, governing council members that want to work with us. That, like we, we have, we've spoke with Tata, um, that was our connection into India for, for MMCM, for instance. But this is opening up because like, like you said earlier, like without validation, how can someone invest in these um, products unless they got an R&D spin. And though that R&D spin is going to, like, there's no one, a start, a, an enterprise couldn't build this. Like an enterprise couldn't spend two to three years building something without any payback, you know? And Tata, just to put it out there, in March of 2024, the combined market cap of their companies was 365 billion. So in closing here, I'm going to leave you with Marco Banyal from Salesforce. I hope I'm saying that right. As he talks about the effect of AI, data centers, and deforestation all contributing to the rapid introduction of carbon into our environment. Until next time, don't get shook. Stay focused. And I'm out. Mark, can I ask you about something that one of your passions where maybe things aren't going as well as you might think, which is climate change. So in the last little bit of time, we the United States has pulled out of the Paris Accords, we've frozen a bunch of spending that was going into climate investment. It seems in fact, we're sort of transferring capital from climate to crypto, which maybe isn't the best use of energy resources. All this AI boom, incredibly carbon intensive. Are we going in the wrong direction on an issue of paramount importance where we're already having a lot of trouble? Well, it's a, it's a pretty big context switch on the panel. I mean, we just heard the incredible benefits of unlimited workforces, the idea that AI is kind of becoming our partner to help us to run our lives, run our businesses, to uh, help us to deliver a, a, new, a new level of uh, productivity without a human workforce. And, you know, you're 100% you're right. We have to keep in mind that we have a, a, a vision for the world that is... Um, uh, getting warmer. And the reason that it's getting warmer is because there is more carbon in the atmosphere. The, the first industrial revolution has really given us about 200 gigatons of carbon into the environment through, you know, various human levels of activity. But it's not our biggest worry. Our biggest worry is really deforestation. Uh, the planet had six trillion trees on us, and um, now we're more than half of those trees are gone. And for every trillion trees, we lose 200 gigatons of carbon banking. So just imagine that as three industrial revolutions that we've released into the environment through deforestation. I was very optimistic yesterday, and I guess we should go back, but we mentioned Trump. Um, 
Five years ago, on this stage in 2020, President Trump announced the Trillion Tree Initiative. That is that our, our vision was to put a trillion of those trees back on the planet to sequester 200 gigatons of carbon. Of those trillion trees that we want to do, we actually now have commitments and underway on 200 billion. The biggest uh, also happened on this stage last year, China coming in for 70 billion trees. Th that is a case for optimism. And another case for optimism happened just yesterday here at the forum, um, not on this stage, but in another stage, uh, the president of the Congo announced the world's largest forest reserve as part of the trillion trees. I think no more. there's nothing more important than reforesting our planet if we want to make our world cooler and to counter what we've done in the industrialization. And number two is we can also see that the oceans are getting warmer. We've just had two back-to-back -back El Nino years.